Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and please don't tease me. So I know it's been a while and I'm sorry I've had you all a bit abandoned. I was wrapping up a couple of novels and then I got a bit sick, so this video got way more delayed than usual. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into how to be a farmer in The Sims 4 Cottage Living Edition. These are all personal observations and I'll definitely put any resources below in the comments which I cite. Here is a quick disclaimer. You will get the most out of this video if you own all the sims 4 packs because i make no distinctions between different types of gameplay if you're not sure where a feature i'm talking about comes from just let me know in the comments and i'll try to find out so why even farm in the game first of all gardening which i will group with farming for the purposes of this explanation and this video is a really good way to make money in the game to be clear this isn't going to be a comprehensive guide to gardening or to farming which are two different skills grouped into one this is only going to talk you through some of the tips and tricks I've learned in my own playthrough to make my sim truly a cottage core farmer sim. Gardening is a really good way to make money. For quick basics, you should know that all plants now have five levels. You can evolve them without going to them, there is no animation, and you can sell them without using your inventory. Let's talk about animals. So, cottage living provides you with cows, llamas, and chickens to care and look after. Let's talk about the big ones first. Cows will give your sim milk and llamas will give your sim wool. You can change the kind of milk or wool you get from big animals by providing different kinds of treats. For instance, if you give a gold treat to a cow, they will yield golden honey milk that season. You can use this for recipes or to earn money, depending on what you want. You do need to be mindful that you'll need a large lot if you want to have llamas or cows, especially a number of them, since only one big animal will fit for per pen and it's a huge amount of grid space. Chickens are a little bit more straightforward. You can put up to 8 chickens into a chicken coop, and I recommend that you buy a hen and a rooster to start with. Every now and then they will provide you with hatchable eggs if you have a rooster in there, which you can then put back into the coop, and you can even watch as they hatch by like just sliding them into it. Once you feed a chicken a particular treat, it'll stay like that forever though, so be careful, but also feel free to have fun with it and experiment. It might also be worth it to turn one, one of your chickens evil, especially if you have a fox problem because it will fight them for you. Chickens will provide eggs for you every single day after 6 o'clock in the morning. They do require quite a bit of care, but you don't have to socialize with every chicken in order to get them to be happy. My routine to keep chickens from leaving is to clean the coop and scatter free around two of them every morning as soon as my sim takes the eggs out of the coop. That way I keep them relatively happy. So you probably won't get rich from rearing animals no matter how hard you try, though I guess you could have a million chickens, but that would feel like a full-time job. Instead, what you want to do is use animals and use them for farming. You can use the poop that you take out of the animal sheds and use it to fertilize your garden or then to get a superb quality veggie so you can sell your more expensive crops. Frequently when cleaning a shed or a coop, your sim will find super strength fertilizer which you can use to create giant oversized crops. I want to talk a little bit here about oversized crops. Oversized crops are cute, but in my opinion you shouldn't worry too much about them because you're likely to only be using them for the newness factor of them. In order to maximize your profits for your farm, you don't want to have to buy fertilizer nor try to sell these crops. So they're only really good for winning fair so far. They'll get you a little ribbon and a few simoleons, but you know it will be better for you and for your farm. So if what you're trying to do is go for profit, you don't want to worry too much about certain fruits or vegetables. Here are the ones that are going to get you the most money in no particular order. I'm only going to mention fruits or vegetables that so you don't need to go out of your way to get. So they come in seed packages or you can harvest them from town. Uh, those rare ones that I'm not going to talk about include the cow plant. I'm only going to talk about standard crops. Non-standard crops like UFO plants or dragon fruits are going to cost far more money. They're great to harvest, but they take a while. These are also going to be base crops. A perfect crop of a cheaper fruit or veggie might end up being more expensive than the base price of something that is more expensive to start with. For starter veggies, you want grapes, snapdragons, lilies, pears, roses, bird of paradise, tulips, bonsai buds, orchids, and pomegranates. There are four different wild animals in cottage living. There are rabbits, birds, and foxes. Wait, that's three. Anyway, you can become friends with all of these species by spamming enough interactions with them and then by giving them presents they might like. You get different advantages per animal. If you befriend a fox, they won't live on your lot, but you might be able to ask them to leave your chickens alone if they attack them. Birds can help you farm and they can affect the sim's mood when they sing with birds. Rabbits are similar to foxes and birds. You befriend them by spamming social interactions, but the advantage with befriending rabbits is that they will keep other rabbits off of your lot by chasing them off. For help with gardening, you should always try to befriend birds first, so you can set a wild bird to stump down on your lot and ask them for help with farming. You can also use Patchy, the scarecrow. Befriending them and having them work on the garden will cut down on a lot of time you need to spend grinding the gardening skill. 
So I tried to create the perfect cottage core sim. Some of my time during this playthrough was spent just trying to maximize a sim from when they were a baby to when they become an adult, in order to make them the most awesome farmer ever that could learn skills very quickly. So among some of the things I tried to do, I tried to get them all to have the happy toddler reward, I tried to have all scout badges, and I also tried to make sure that my sims were helping out in the house th at the farm, because ch children are able to cook now and they can take care of the animals too, which is great. For my next generation, I think the best traits that would be ideal for a sim doing this farming work are dance machine, because with the dance snap feature that allows sims to recharge very quickly and doesn't make them sleep for very long, love the outdoors because your sim is going to be outdoors for a while every single day, and outgoing because if you're really trying to make your farm as efficiently as possible, what you want to do is maximize labor. And here's how you can do that without changing your household. You should use the club system for this. Create a hobby club in which people interact with animals, take care of the garden, clean up and repair objects. Then make sure to start a gathering at your sim's farm. They will make it so other sims clean up weeds, water plants and keep them looking nice and healthy, even if your sim is doing something else like reading or skilling another thing. Another way to utilize clubs is by making sure that someone is looking after the house. So for instance, you might want to do a domestic chores club. While your sim takes care of the farm, another member of the club might be doing your sim's laundry. There are a million ways to exploit the system and you should absolutely use it to your advantage. Before I give you more tips about how to make an incredible farmer, I want to talk to you about the simple living lot challenge. This actually makes your game a bit more difficult, but I recommend it very highly because it helps quite a lot with immersion. This makes it a lot more fun to live on a farm because your sim has to forage a bunch of raw ingredients and you can easily shop for the rest or go fishing for truly self-sustaining sims and households. The meals in this lot tend to be higher quality, and I don't know if this is true, but it feels like my sims scaled up quicker on gardening when they were cooking at this lot. They also seem to scale up quickly on cooking. You should also utilize fishing as much as possible. Not only will you be able to fertilize your sims crops like this, your outdoor living sim will enjoy the experience, which will put them in a better mood. Make sure that your sim also likes fishing. You want your sim to be in a good mood because it makes it easier for your sim to scale. You don't have to do this by going into cast so you're able to. Instead, have your sim fish and wait until the pop-up appears that says that they enjoy fishing. If it says that they don't like it, just decline it until the next time you have your sim do that activity. Getting a profitable farm can take a little bit of time and fishing can help you get some money in the meantime. Additionally, you can put some of the fish you catch into your fridge if you're doing a simple living challenge. This will help you create any fish-based dishes at home. Okay, now let's talk about setting up a greenhouse. You should use a greenhouse to make sure you get as much done as possible. All harvestables are affected by the weather, which can be a problem if you have seasons, but it won't be a problem if your harvestables are inside. To do this, create a room in the game, delete the floor and put down cropping fields or simply drag your harvestable to the grid and have your sim start to plant. To make sure that your plants get plenty of light, you should flank the room with windows and make sure that the roof is made of glass so the sun comes in. I don't think this functionally does anything to be clear, but it does break my immersion if the room isn't actually clear and made of glass, so make sure to do that so that you also know it's a greenhouse when you're trying to maintain your farm. Okay, so you might be asking yourself, why bother to have kids as a farmer in the first place since kids aren't able to garden? That's a good point and a valid question, and I'm going to answer it for you right now. Apart from gardening, kids can do almost everything else right now. You can have your child sims clean the coops and the sheds early in the morning before they go to school and collect the eggs which you can then drag to an adult sim if you want to sell them or to the fridge depending on what you want to do with them. Children are also able to fish, can now cook with adults and will help you tidy up. They are not able to do repairs. Not only that, children can milk cows and share shear llamas. So if you find yourself too busy with the upkeep of your farm, your child will do it for you. You can also make kids exclusive clubs where they do homework and take care of your farm and that way your little farmer child can make friends too. So here's how to combine all of these tips. It took me a couple of generations, but I made a very wealthy gardening family. I used children, clubs, and animals in order to make sure they're wealthy. And their house is being slowly upgraded from cottage core to cottage core fancy edition. You can use these tips however you like. There's plenty to do here, and I'm sure I haven't covered anything in depth really. You can also go to the fairs, but I didn't speak much about them because there isn't much money to be made there. Anyway, this was just a quick guide to make a farmer sim in cottage living and I hope it helps you. I'll try not to be away for as long next time. Thank you for bearing with me. So tell me what you're doing on cottage living. What's your gameplay like? What are you enjoying and what do you hate? Thank you for watching and once again, please don't tease me. Subscribe if you like this. Bye!